Hello YouTube, here's the part of my whole solar build where I'm starting to question my sanity a little bit. I lifted that uh, inverter assembly into the truck and that was no treat because as you can see it's pretty high off the ground. So thank goodness I decided to put that backing plate on that came with the kit because that really provided the rigidity and support I needed to lift that bugger up. If I just put those panels on there, it would have, it, I don't think it would have worked out. But anyhow, um, it's just barely short enough to fit in there. And what I plan to do is put the batteries in there. The batteries are fairly tall. They're almost as tall as the bottom of that uh, panel right here. And so it's going to be a little bit of a trick to get those in there and then uh, you know get the cable to snake up through there because that 4 aught cable is really beefy stuff so what I'm hoping to do is uh, put the batteries in there get that inverter mounted securely and geez I thought I got a, a I thought that truck top was gonna be plenty tall and it's it's not um, but anyhow what I plan to do I'm going to mount an outlet right here to plug my camper into and then I'll have another outlet or actually be an inlet right here to plug the generated generator into so I can if I don't have enough solar power I can charge my batteries off the generator or supplement uh, my battery or the solar power if I need to. The big concern I had was um, where my battery cable is going to be long enough because uh, I got five foot cables uh, and just due to the price I didn't want to get ten foot and I didn't want to make it myself because uh, the price of the crimping tool would have outweighed anyhow it was cheaper to have them made and then I don't have to store the uh, crimping tool later because I'm going to be space constrained but anyhow uh, I got all the batteries in and uh, my cable is going to be long enough and what I'm going to do is uh, build a cabinet for them and then I'll be venting it outside the cab somehow uh, and what I'm going to have to do is I don't want to lose this vent right here because it is hotter than hell inside this thing right now so there's going to be days when I want to open that up and get a little ventilation a little extra ventilation for this guy right here um, but I got to figure out how to secure this into the truck because it's really top heavy and so if you actually stand it up so it's straight up and down it wants to pitch forward because all the weight is in that inverter up there that thing is heavy so I got to engineer something uh, to secure that into the truck I'm probably gonna have to do a frame that goes all the way across and then comes down uh, just to support that weight that wants to pitch forward. I'm back up on the roof of my uh, travel trailer and it might be a little shaky because I'm not using the tripod. What I'm doing is connecting my solar panels up so I've wired these together in series so that they're putting out 48 volts and then I'm going to use this little Y connector and I, to connect uh, this is a wire Oops. This is a wire from the other set of panels. And it's just going to connect down to there. And then that one. And then I'll run a, a long wire down to the charge controller. And then I got the same situation over here. I gotta, I gotta get some cable ties up here and straighten this up so it's not such a mess and won't blow around when I'm driving. It's just going to go down to the truck. All right, I got my magnet sign mounted into the truck, and uh, I'm going to secure it in here a little bit better. But it's okay if the truck's not moving. And I got my batteries in, and of course, there's a loud truck. And uh, I'm going to build a box around those, and then uh, 
run ventilation out to the back of the truck and uh, but I wanted to get my wires put in first to see how high I had to build my box get myself plenty of room those are pretty stiff they won't be bending down so I got to make a box tall enough to accommodate the wires got my temperature sensors put in and uh, made sure my cables are long enough to reach where they need to reach on here uh, checked out my batteries I'm getting 25 volts off of each set of four batteries and then I'm gonna go ahead and hook those together in parallel and I gotta put um, this fuse block in and that's gonna be my uh, fuse to protect my wiring uh, on the way to the inverter and uh, the thing I like about this is it goes right on to the post so I don't have to uh, cut the wire from the uh, my battery cable, my 4 watt battery cable that's going uh, from the batteries up to the inverter which is going to be nice because that stuff is thick and I really didn't want to either crimp or put a big ass uh, fuse block on there which I purchased and I hope I can able, be able to return because this thing was like I want to say around 20 bucks off of Amazon and that other thing was about 35 and this is going to work out way better um, this is marine grade, it's really good stuff so I'm looking forward to uh, putting that on and getting this baby running well because I couldn't resist the temptation I went ahead and uh, hooked up the solar panel off the top of the travel trailer uh, to this bus bar that I'm going to use to connect uh, the panels that I'm going to put on the top of the truck and then I'm going to run the wire from there to the charge controller but I just wanted to see what kind of voltage I was getting off of the top of that just off of the top there and I'm getting uh, 81.8 I was getting 82 uh, which is puzzling because uh, they're supposed to be 12 volt panels that's what they're spec at so four of them together should be 48 and they're together in parallel so that should still be 48 um, really shouldn't be a problem because the charge controller can handle that voltage and it just means I'm going to be running that less amount of amps through the wire and I'll get better uh, performance out of it but just kind of curious okay it looks like a total crap back here but I've got my RV plugged into this box I'm going to mount on the back of this camper shell and uh, I just have it loosely wired right now just because I wanted to see if it would work and then I'll uh, take it back apart and mount it and then uh, wire loom everything correctly and make it look good but uh, yeah I got it running and it's hotter and shit in this thing right now it's 88 degrees inside of here um, let me just hit stop for a second and change his camera position so um, <laughs> The hardest part of this project is you got to be a bit of a contortionist and I got a lot of cleaning up to do but basically um, here's the panel I don't know if that's going to come in good showing that I'm actually inverting got my 24 volt system set up and I'm just running off the eight panels off the top of the camper and if you're going to do this project yourself, one, if there's any way possible, you can scrounge up the extra four or five hundred dollars to have this pre-built and sent to you. Do it. Donate plasma. Work extra shifts. It seems like it wouldn't be that big a pain in the ass, but it kind of is. Um, and then I was watching another guy's video, and this is the battery uh, monitor. And it, I had it mounted. There's two holes for it right in here. And uh, I watched some other guy's video, and he didn't put it in there. He had it mounted outside. And I'm like, why did you mount that outside? And he goes, it gets pretty busy in there. And he's absolutely right. There's, it's super difficult to mount this thing inside of here, um, the way it's set up. Much easier, put it outside, wrap these wires later, run them up where they need to go. Uh, it's, or if you're going to do that, make sure the very first thing you do is mount that battery monitor. Uh, it connects to this shunt right here. And once you put these six gauge wires in, which are super stiff, it is super difficult 
uh, to get behind there and do anything. I ended up taking it out and then just running the wires up to it. So, um, and if you buy this thing as a kit, uh, it comes with these two extra circuit breakers. And I was like, what's a two amp circuit breaker for? Well, it's for that battery monitor. So I kind of found that out later, later reading the directions and everybody in the world is driving by my house right now. Uh, but anyhow, I'm pretty happy and uh, got a little, I got a lot of straightening up to do and then I'll, I'll post that when I get to it. Okay, I can't resist the temptation. I'm going to see if uh, I can run my air conditioner. 13,000 BTU should be well under the range of the uh, 4,000 watts. I'm going to give myself a break. I'm going to start the fan on. So I have that surge. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the air conditioner and see if it goes. <laughs> it's running. I'm running my air conditioner off of uh, batteries. Pretty sweet. I don't know if you can hear that running. But yeah, it's blowing uh, blowing cold air out of there. So, uh, not right out of there, but out of this right here. All right, get you later.